Let's talk about anticipating and recognizing hazards. The way I'm going to do that, at least initially, is to talk about my high school job. I worked at a grocery store in Arundacoit, New York, a suburb of Rochester. I worked there from late in my junior year of high school through the summer after my sophomore year in college. When I went to work at the grocery store, my first job there was to collect carts outside. Today, many cart pushers have automated, battery-powered pushers to move trains of carts. Back when I did the job, I worked much like the person in this image. We assembled long trains of carts and pushed them across the parking lot. So there was a lot of heavy pushing, and there was also a chance to get your fingers pinched between the carts. It was hard, tiring work. We would sometimes make very long trains of carts on purpose to see how long we could make the train and still push it back to the front of the lot. Sometimes the long trains got a little out of control and hard to stop because they had so much momentum. We had to be concerned about vehicles in the parking lot. Often the parking lot was congested, particularly at busy times around holidays or on weekends. Although I was never injured by an incident with a car, there are many close calls and I had to watch myself around cars that were moving too fast or were having difficulty backing out of a parking space. During different times of the year, we were exposed to either heat or to cold. Because Rochester, New York is on Lake Ontario, we had a lot of lake effect snow and frequently it would be slippery in the parking lot during the winter in addition to it being cold. In the summertime, it could be very hot and we would feel it after four hours of pushing carts around. We would sometimes be faced with shoplifters when we worked outside the store. On one particular occasion, I was collecting carts on a sunny afternoon. I was out there by myself, it wasn't very busy, and I was off in my own little world as I was picking up carts. So I wasn't really paying too much attention to what was going on other than in my own immediate vicinity. Suddenly, I saw this guy running toward me, and as he got closer, he yelled to me, Don't do it, man! Don't do it! I'm thinking to myself, don't do what? The guy ran past, and I was still trying to understand what he meant when my supervisor runs up to me and says, Pete, why didn't you stop him? I thought to myself, stop what? I had no idea what was going on. It turned out that he was a shoplifter. So there was a risk that, had I realized what was going on and tried to intervene, I could have been subjected to some violence. My supervisor was a little disgusted with me for not divining that I should have stopped the guy. This particular supervisor didn't like me very much, and it was sometimes stressful to deal with him. Eventually, I was given the opportunity to move inside, at least most of the time, and be a checkout clerk, which involved scanning a lot of items, putting them into bags, and lifting the bags up and over a shelf to put them into the customer's shopping carts. I would also have to enter numbers into the keypad on the register. Shifts on the registers could last as long as eight hours with a lunch and two short breaks. Standing in one place and repeating these same actions over and over was tiring. One of the other things I would sometimes do when I worked inside was to go to the back room of the store and bring sacks of paper bags, 500 per sack, up to the front end. We didn't have plastic bags back then, so these were thick paper bags. I would take a large cart to the back room, go into the truck trailer where the sacks were stored, climb a pile of sacks, toss about 15 sacks from the pile onto the bed of the trailer, pick the sacks up and pile them onto the cart, and push the heavy cart through the store to the front. Once there, I would have to unload sacks by each register, open the sacks with a box cutter, and stack the bags in the storage area below the register where the clerks could pull them out and use them for customers. It was a pretty tough job. When I worked inside at the front end, there was always a chance that we would have to deal with those shoplifters. One time, a couple of us chased after some shoplifters who were trying to steal beer late at night. We got out into the parking lot and found that we were a little outnumbered because the shoplifters were part of a larger group. Fortunately, the shoplifters and their friends decided to leave the beer on the ground and drive away, rather than forcing a confrontation. Another time, several of us were working up front, and a car pulled up outside the front window of the store right near us. A bunch of guys piled out of the vehicle after popping the hood, and we could see that there was a fire in the engine compartment. We were naturally concerned about this, as you might expect. After a frantic few seconds discussing what we should do, I ran out to the store with our fire extinguisher and put out the fire, trying to keep as far away as I could. 
We were surprised about 10 minutes later when the guys piled back into the car and drove away. I'm not sure how far they got. It was a topic of discussion for my coworkers and me for the rest of the evening. Among some of the other duties I had was occasional maintenance work, especially on weekends. There was one time on the Monday of Labor Day weekend that I had to clean both the men's and women's bathrooms for the store. It was clear that they had not been cleaned since the previous Friday, and it was a pretty eye-opening experience to have to clean those restrooms after that amount of time. In short, it was not a fun job. There was lots of nasty stuff in the bathrooms and a variety of cleaning products needed to be used. Another one of my occasional tasks was to take materials to the back room to be disposed of. Large groups of fluorescent bulbs are changed out at the same time in stores to make the task easier logistically. This was the early 1980s. The fluorescent light bulbs were not recycled at that time. When I was asked to dispose of the bulbs that had been changed out, I would take barrels full of them back to the trash compactor in the back room, pile them into the trash compactor, close the door to the compactor room, press the button to turn the compactor on, and we would then hear the bulbs shatter in the compactor. As a teenager, this was a pretty cool thing to hear, all the crashing and smashing, and eventually, after the compactor had stopped, we would open the door and we could see an almost magical haze of shiny glass particles floating in the compactor room. It was awesome to look at, man. Probably the most fun I had on the job was on one full day shift on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, when my coworker Todd and I had the opportunity to hang holiday decorations for the entire day. We climbed ladders and reached out to hang things across the ceiling. We climbed ladders outdoors and hung garlands and decorations across the front of the store. There was a lot of climbing up and down and reaching this way and that, but it was a really fun day because it was an unusual task to get paid to do. We enjoyed it quite a bit. By this point, you may be wondering, why is this guy droning on about his high school job? Well, let's think about my job and about the potential hazards that I faced on the job. There were hazards that could have caused unintentional injuries. Fires like from the car, vehicles in the parking lot, slips in the parking lot when I pushed carts, falls from ladders when I hung holiday decorations, sharp objects like box cutters, and pinch points like when the carts come together and you pinch your fingers as you try to line them up. In addition to the unintentional injuries, there was a risk of intentional injuries. Violence was a risk, particularly when I faced shoplifters. Repetitive motion injuries were quite possible. I faced the risk of an injury to my back from pushing carts, lifting sacks of bags in the back room, and lifting full bags into customers' carts at the checkout. Wrist injuries were possible from continually scanning items at the checkouts for long periods of time. Temperature extremes when I worked outdoors, both when it was hot and cold, could have led to heat or cold strain. I was exposed to germs at work. Because I was dealing with members of the public, I could have been exposed to their germs as they sneezed or coughed near me and when I handled their money. There were also the times when I cleaned the public restrooms when there was a potential for exposure to germs. Chemical exposures from cleaning chemicals and the mercury in the fluorescent bulbs could have been a health concern too. Even stress could have been a concern. I knew that my supervisor didn't like me very much. If I had cared more about the job than I did, I may have felt stress that could have impacted me negatively. There was a whole range of different hazards that I was potentially exposed to in my workplace. Although you may have been able to anticipate that grocery workers face workplace hazards, most of you, unless you've worked a very similar job, would not have been able to recognize all of these different hazards. This is an important point because when you are trying to anticipate and recognize hazards, you really need to get to know the job before you can be effective at analyzing the hazards. Ultimately, workers are the experts on their own jobs. If you are trying to understand where there is a potential for hazardous exposures to whatever sort of agent you're concerned about, you need to talk to the workers. <laughs>